we got the drip up and going. All except that last one. Still waiting on those boards. But we used drip tape. Just tested it. Works really well so far. So what we did, this is half inch poly tubing, elbow, I think I said earlier, we did a clamp for each bed. So that if we are not using a bed, we are not wasting water, we can conserve. So now I can start planting everything. Supposedly, it's going to be in the 40s and 50s at night up here now. So I can get what remaining plants I have that have not died off from whatever it did or was not damaged too bad from the hail. I can start getting in the ground. I'm going to do my potatoes, tomatoes. I do need to buy more peppers. So I'm going to do a little walk of the garden with the map that I've kind of drawn of my ideas. Obviously this is a little different. Um, this is my experimental bed where stuff's popping up. This one we're waiting on the back part still. And I keep going back and forth on where I'm planting things. So essentially these two are set in stone. Woo, wind. I planted my asparagus yesterday. Lots of the strawberries so far. I didn't put on here. I need to put on here the strawberries. I'm kind of iffy on corn back in this area and then I've moved corn here potatoes throughout this bed peppers tomatoes peppers tomatoes and then as you can see here pumpkin cantaloupe honeydew watermelon and then some of the other squashes all while having cucumbers going up the trellis and um, more noodle beans and pole beans over here along with over here I plan on doing a lot of canning with my beans this year so that's, I'm making that a precedence, a priority, I guess, would be a more appropriate term. And then zucchini, and then the quick neck squash that I have going, along with herbs. And then this one, like I have the peas going, I have my yard there, and then I'll be starting the bush beans in succession planting. And then the same thing over here, I'll be putting those in between the corn. These ones... I want something else to companion plant with the potatoes. I'm not quite sure what yet. Maybe the basil and stuff. Basil, mint, and everything like that I usually put with my tomatoes. They do really well together. Same with calendula over here. Nasturtiums will die out pretty quickly in the heat has been my um, experience with them. They're very, they're like Goldilocks. If it's too hot, they shrivel. If it's too cold, they shrivel. <laughs> But they're beautiful and apparently they're um, edible so it's always good to have so this is the ideas I did get some more raspberry stalks in that I'm gonna be needing to plant in there and then I did put the little pots in front of all this where I think I'm gonna do the actual flowers that I have listed here so I need to get those going, seed, seed those out, and pot them up. I have been finally getting to the green stalk and taking apart the levels of strawberries that have gone neglected. Just kind of want to show you what I've done and what it looks like, and then I can show you the last level. So this is what everything looked like, completely crowded. As you can see, there's a lot of dead stuff in there that I'm having to take out, and then I'm cleaning them up, taking everything out of them except for my thyme that I have. So I have four rows, and this is what's inside the green stalk. It's a disc, has little holes to each section. So you point it at the section. Where am I going? So right here, turn it just a little bit. And this fills up and waters everything, and then I'll, and then this is how the water goes down. I 
and so all the strawberries that I've taken out so far fills an entire flat <laughs> in various stages so this is probably two plants and that's the crown so this is what gets moldy and nasty if you un if you submerge it under water too long and this is what makes them a perennial really this is their long and then this there's different stages like I said I even have some in here that were runners which is what most of these started out as and so this was a little runner this is where it came off its mother plant and it doesn't really have roots yet but generally I've had good luck even cutting them off before they've grown roots because again they're really hardy I'll take these off so they focus on the root production but there's a lot in here so yeah I'll be taking some of these off just so they can work on their roots base of the plant to help move it out. There we go. So you can just kind of pull them apart. And then I just go through and clean them up. You don't want dead nasties on them. But you can see the root system and again strawberries are very very hardy so they'll be just fine this one was regrowing looks like it had died back with this moldy moldy stuff and then it starts growing back so this you can see this is the stem that it came off the mother plant from it's just different texture. Or it had a runner. Could be either or. Here. It's all that new growth coming from the crown. Right here. So again, never submerge those under the dirt or the water. And then I'm just going to repeat that all the way around. And we'll see what how many I get. Oh, flattened it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then these are all the strawberries we got out of there. Mm -hmm. At least a couple dozen. And then we got to get it up on here. Got to wait for Daddy. Did you tell Daddy? Can you go tell Daddy? Mm -hmm. My little helper. Yeah. It is fully reassembled and cleaned off. One of the things about the green sock is that you can get bugs that like to lay their eggs and stuff in between these so it's a good idea to jet them off with water every so often so I just have my two times in here right now and then I added worm compost the worm ca castings and some more potting soil and kind of mixed it around so I moved the strawberries into the shade probably not gonna get to it today but I have all of these to plant. Even if half of them make it, my goodness, that's a lot of extras. Something that I really like to use that I don't think I have on hand is a berry fertilizer from Espoma. They're kind of like this. That's a bone meal one, tomato one, not very economical. In this size <laughs> with this size of garden nope don't see any there's a soil acidifier that I'm using for the blueberries anyways 
So I'll put these around the tomatoes and the asparaguses and then probably throughout the garden and probably give some to my in-laws. So I think I'm gonna have too many. These are red raspberries, I think. I just planted them, let's see what they are. Yeah, Polana red raspberries. So this one's already got some growth on it down in here too. <laughs> the kids are getting into mud. And I have, these are golden ones. So I put them in each side of the beds. There's five of them. So I have here, this corner, and then I put one in this corner. And they are the and yellow raspberries. And then these are my peppers. These are the ones that haven't completely crumbled yet. I have no idea still. They're all starting. As you can see. So I don't know what to do. Even this big one that I thought was going to make it. I have no idea. I'm going to have to go get a whole bunch more. Because I did not start any peppers since we left so late. Or moved. I'm gonna pop these off so they don't try to so they can put work into their leaves and such at this point same see even this one is just starting what's up Lukey I want to help you you want to help me okay. you got your shovel in hand I think we're done planting today mommy's tired no we're not we have, <laughs> still have that big goat pile do we Mm hmm <sighs> Some of the tomatoes are planted. Mommy, can I fill this up? Fill it with what, baby? Dirt. This pot. Stop, stop banging on it, please. Can I fill this pot up? Yeah, if you, you can fill it halfway. Where's that gray trash can? Oh. Wait, just find the gray trash oh, can. He's super excited to help. Love it. Hope it never leaves in the teen years. <laughs> okay. So even this one, I can cut these off. As long as this top part doesn't go. Not sure. But what you do when you plant these, when you plant tomatoes, is you essentially cut off so you can bury it all the way up because on here is all the little hairs that will turn into, there you go, that will turn into roots when they're submerged into soil. So these may look tiny, small, but that's because I, I put it all the way down up to its leaves and I've cut off the lower levels. My mint seems to be doing okay. This is, oh, it's a spearmint. Are you going to help Lukey James? Yeah. yeah. Remember, don't let that get too heavy or you're not going to be able to carry it. Well, how full is it? Do you need to go pour it in there now? No, no, no. It's, it's still at the bottom. Okay. I <laughs> love those little boys. They're so sweet. Oh, feels good to be getting stuff done in the garden. So, so good. Here is the plant starts. This is a lot of what I have inside. I have a lot of tomatoes, so I'm not too worried about those other ones croaking. I only have one butternut squash though, and the ones out there, the hail devoured them and then they're starting to look like those peppers. And fennel, I have no idea what to do with this, I need to read it again, probably should thin them. 
nasturtiums and some cucumbers. More tomatoes. Lots to do.